Good morning and God bless you. We want to wish you a very happy and blessed Tuesday. Yeah, and uh, well, good morning. Uh, let's be blessed. Last night it rained and here in Waco and so uh and there, I don't I know if there was any I don't know if there was hail because You heard noise? I heard some noise but I was too sleepy to even hear that. <laughs> I said, okay, Lord, just take care of us all. We, we enjoy we enjoy the uh, the rain, right, and take care of us. Well, you know. As long as it keeps the grass <laughs> green and I don't have to water my grass yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, I like it when it rains, kind of. I do. I like it when it rains. I do, too. But I, I prefer when it rains at night. So I was really happy that it rained last night because mm-hmm. I like it to be sunny in You're the daytime. Looking forward to a sunny day, right? <laughs> Amen. Well, it's good to be here this morning. Um, happy Cinco de Mayo. Oh, yeah. Today is Cinco de Mayo. Uh, for, for a those Mexican those, celebration. Yes, yes. And so um, we pray that you have a blessed day. I know you're. some of you are getting up, getting dressed, getting ready to get to work, having your morning coffee. And yep. some of you probably driving to work or at work already. And so we pray that you have a blessed day today. And, um, and well, we have, you know, a, a new a word that we want to share with you along the topic of you can have it all, which we started yesterday. Yeah. And um, understanding that. You know, the all we're talking about is God's all for our life. Yeah. Because some, you know, our definition of all may be way off. (laughs) Okay, you know, but um, according to God's all for us and God has nothing but the best for each and every one of us. That's true. And so every day we're just going to be touching this subject, little point here, little point here, little point there. And at the end of it all, we pray that we'll have a complete understanding. But the first step is you got to believe it. You got to receive it. You know, you got to believe that God wants me to have all. If you don't Amen. believe that God wants you to have all, well, then it ain't going to happen. Amen. Amen. So, uh, we're, so a man thinketh, so is he. Yes. So, yes. why don't we get started with the word of prayer? Say, uh, let's say this. Father, we thank you Father, for this thank morning. You for this morning. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for everything. Thank you for everything. And all. And all that you've done for us. That you've done for us. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. We want it all. We want it all. And that you would be glorified. And that you would be glorified. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, today's topic is, are you willing to receive? Amen. You know, are you willing to receive? Uh, you got to be willing to receive in the kingdom of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Okay. The kingdom of Jesus. There is a spiritual law. Uh, this is the new covenant. There was an old covenant. The new covenant is not a repeat of the old covenant. It's not an upgrade of the old covenant. I need to get that straight. It's not an upgrade of the old covenant. We're not adding to it. No, no. It is a brand new covenant. Mm-hmm. Okay. I need to say that again. <laughs> the new covenant is not an upgrade of the old covenant. It's not a continuation of the old covenant. It's not a... Uh, It's not filling in the gaps of the old covenant. No, it's a brand new covenant. Mm -hmm. Jesus has is the end of the law. That covenant was fulfilled. Okay. And so it has, it's like when you have a contract and you pay off the note. Mm -hmm. Some people celebrate. We did that. We burned the note. We don't have, we don't need it no more. Thank you, Jesus. You know, it's paid off. You know, uh, we saved the receipt though, (laughs) but we burned the note, you know, and, uh, you know, the uh, the thing is that uh, Jesus fulfilled that covenant for us, mm-hmm. and he implemented a new covenant. Mm-hmm. And in this covenant, there is a spiritual law, and it is everything that God has for us. He's given it to us in Christ Jesus, mm-hmm. and he made it available to us by grace through faith. You are saved by grace, not by works, mm-hmm. that no man would boast, but mm-hmm. that uh, that God would be all the only one glorified. Amen. And so... Uh, so when we talk about God has it all for you, are you willing to receive it? Many people say yes, but they don't really understand that. Mm-hmm. You know, they uh, they want to try to deserve it. They're trying to feel like they deserve it. They want to earn it. You know, grace is God's un- 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 unmerited favor. Mm-hmm. It's God giving favor to the one who can never deserve it. Yes. Some people are trying to deserve it. Some people are trying to pay for it. Some people are trying to buy it. You know, some people are probably better saying, you know what, let me just buy it, Lord. Because um, I remember when we were growing up, this made me think of something when we were growing up. When you and me were growing up? No, no. When, when, <laughs> when, 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 well, we had to grow up too, you know, but when. But not uh, together. We didn't grow but, up together. But um, when our, when me and my, my sisters and my brother were growing up and we were in home, I remember that um, 
we would always ask my mom, like, you know, for Mother's Day or for her birthday, which, by the way, Mother's Day is around the corner. Yes, it is. Um, so we would always ask her, you know, like, Mom, what do you want? What do you, you know, what do you, what do you want? What, what do you want for a gift? What do you want us to buy you? You know, Christmas, uh, Mother's Day, her birthday, things like that. And my mom would always say, you know, um, all I want is for y'all to behave. All I want <laughs> is for y'all to act right. Or all I want is for y'all to just be obedient and listen to me and and then we would all be like, you know, mom, just, you know, we'd rather just buy you something. Just, just tell us what you want, okay? You know, it's, it's something we can pay with money. Cause we, we can't do that. We can't do that. You're asking for too much there. You know? That's funny. And so perhaps sometimes we, we go to the Lord like, Lord, just just let me pay for it, you know? Because yeah. sometimes it's like it feels easier we could just buy something, yeah. you know, than, than to just receive it, than to have faith, you know? Salvation cannot be purchased by us. Salvation has already been purchased. You know, I, I like to say it this way. Salvation did not make you and I perfect. <laughs> but salvation that was given to us is perfect. Amen. <laughs> it is perfect. Amen. Uh, and so uh, it's like somebody giving me the money to pay off my mortgage. I didn't make that money, but I apply it and I receive the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. Well, are you willing to receive? And the kingdom of God is about receiving. And there's so much we can talk and Holy Spirit help us to, to, uh, to just talk what we need to talk in the minutes that we have. But, you know, in Mark chapter 10 mm -hmm. and verse 28 and verse 29, 29. Mm -hmm. 29 and 30, I uh, want to read these verses and then we'll tell the story. Mm -hmm. Okay. It says, so Jesus answered and said, surely I say to you, I'm reading in the New King James Version. Mm -hmm. There is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake in the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation that says, Verse 29, yes, Jesus replied, and I assure you that everyone who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or property for my sake and for the good news, verse 30, will receive now in return a hundred times as many houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and property along with persecution. And in the world to come, that person will have eternal life. So the question here today is, are you willing to just receive it all mm -hmm. and not try to earn it? Mm -hmm. Amen. And this story is based on a young man that came to Jesus to buy. It's in Mark chapter 17, 10, I'm sorry, from 17 mm -hmm. down to 30. You can read the whole story. But this young man, he was a very wealthy man. He came running. Jesus was on his way. He was walking and this man came running to him. And when he arrived to where Jesus was, he got on his knees before the Lord and he asked him, Lord, what do I need to do? Uh, uh, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal, eternal life? life? What do I need to do? <laughs> he wanted to earn it. Yes. What needs to be done? Yes, pay for it, earn it. What yes. is lacking yes. so that I can receive yes. this? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? Because he, when he approached, he said, good master. He said, why do you call me good? Jesus is already trying to let him know something. He's already ministering to the man. He don't even know it. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says Jesus loved him. And then the Bible says, Jesus says, do you know the commandments? He asked him, do you know them? He says, of course, I've kept them all since I was a young person. Jesus didn't ask him if he kept them. He asked him if he knew them. If he knew them. Mm -hmm. So this guy is trying to buy. He's trying to purchase eternal mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And Jesus uh, then says to him, well, there's only one thing you need to do. Go sell all your possessions, take the money, and give it to the poor, and follow me. The Bible says the man got sad, and he walked away, walked away. sad, because he had many possessions. Wow. Now, when Jesus told the, and so he left, but then after the guy left Peter, I like Peter, I like Peter, because he, yes, he, you know, he was bold. He had complete he felt comfortable with Jesus. I just say he'd say some of the things, you know, we're like, really? But you know, the Lord would always tend to him when he would answer. He goes, Lord, hey, we've left it all for you. <laughs> we left it all for you in the gospel. 
And then Jesus responded these words that we read to him. Mm -hmm. So if the young man would have stuck around, he would have realized that what Jesus was offering him was better than what he was asking of him. Yes, amen. When he evaluated what Jesus said to him, he saw that, hey, man, what you're offering me cannot compare what you're asking me to give up. Amen. You know, and uh, and the Lord was wanting to give him not actually the Lord didn't want to take that away from him. Mm -hmm. He wanted to he wanted to move it out of its place because it was in the wrong yes. place. Yes. That's the problem was move he had because he, he said, I want to give you a hundred fold more. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't trying to take it away from him. He had it in the wrong place where he had it in the priority in the place that belonged to him. Amen. That belonged Amen. to God. And so you can have it all. But you got to be willing to prioritize your life. And yes. we'll talk about that later. Another day, yes. Yeah. yeah. So he was trying to help him prioritize, prioritize, Spanish and English sometimes just gets twisted up, <laughs> prioritize his life so he could receive it all. Yes. So it's going to be by faith. Yes. Okay. I feel a sneeze coming. So I'm trying to <laughs> fight it off. Um, there is no other way. The Bible says without faith, it is a... Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that. It is by faith. This Bible says, uh, without faith, it is impossible mm -hmm. to please God. Amen. You can't please God no other way, baby doll. Mm -hmm. nope. There's nothing you can do to please God mm -hmm. except by believing God. Mm -hmm. And Abraham is, is God's revealing that to us. Yes. Abraham believed God yes. and it was counted unto him as righteous. Abraham yes. wasn't the greatest man. He lied, you know, he trying to, you know, lie about his wife. And Abraham wasn't always the perfect man, but he believed God. And that's yes. what God was infatuated, excited about Abraham. That's what would touch the heart of God about Abraham. Abraham would just, if God said it, I believe it. I don't understand it, but I believe it. If God says it, I believe it, I receive it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Because there's no other way to please God mm -hmm. but believe him. That honors God more than any work. Anything you do for God cannot compare to the fact that you believe God. What touches the heart of God yes. is you just believe him. And don't just believe it, you receive it. Yes. So even when, you know, what you're saying that is that even when God come and ask us for something or ask something of us, is is because God is wanting to put us in a position Places in a position where we're ready to receive. Exactly. You know, move aside whatever blockage or whatever obstacle is there, you know, um, and that we can be ready to receive what God has already done for us, what God has already, you know, in the scripture that we read in Philippians last week, it talked yeah. about, and, and you know, not, not do not worry about anything. Yes. In, instead, pray about everything and talk to God and thank him. For all that he's already done. Yes. You know, so Thanksgiving being is a part yes, of work. You know, so of asking God, Thanksgiving is part of it. So he's already done. He's already provided everything that you need and, and, and everything that, you know, all the good things that God, the, his good will for you that's good, pleasing, and perfect. And so even when God comes, you know, like this young man and asks, you know, asks you to do something, you know, to let go of something, to move something aside or... It's, it's not because he, you know, he wants to take it away from you. It's because he wants to position you. He wants to place you in that position where you can be ready to receive. Because sometimes our life is out of order. Mm -hmm. we gotta Many get times, our life, yes. we got to get our life in order. Mm -hmm. Certain areas in our life, God's trying to get us in order yes. because we have to receive everything yes. that God has for us. So uh, we'll talk about that later, about the priorities. Yes. But here, you got to be willing to receive it. That's today's topic, you know. Yes. Are you willing to receive yes. it? Not earn it, but not buy it. How many times, when you when you feel like you've been real good, how do you approach God? Oh, you just feel so worthy to ask. <laughs> but when you haven't been yes. as yes. Uh, up to par, yes. when you haven't been as spiritual as you think yes. you should be, or you haven't been as passionate for God as you think you should be, how do you approach God like a beggar? Yes. You know, like, oh, yes. I know one time, I never forget one time I approached God like a beggar. He corrected me. Yes. He said, you don't have to come like that. Yes. You don't have to come beg me. You're not, you know, you don't have to humiliate yourself to make me be exalted. Yes. You and, know? you know, sometimes we, we have, we, we kind of approach God with that mentality that, you know, when we feel that we're doing good, you know, because there are moments where we feel like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm really doing good. You know, <laughs> I mean, I'm serving God right. I'm living right, you know. 
And it's, we feel like in those moments we have more right to come yeah. to God and ask for things, you know, it's God, not. you know, and that, and that he's going to answer because, you know, <laughs> because of we're that. on the good list. Got I'm, on the, I'm on the good <laughs> list, you know. It's like Santa Claus. But, you know, you know, you know sometimes we're on that bad list, okay? Yeah. You know, sometimes we just, you know, it's been hard. We haven't been doing all that good and all that right and you know you've been having attitudes you've been indifferent you've been cold you've been you know battling with something struggling you know. with you know things on the inside your thoughts and your emotions and um and you know what if we're honest in those moments we don't usually feel too confident to <laughs> yeah. to go to god you know we, we, we and um but but god's not like that you know um, adults you know or human beings are you know Throw, we'll throw things in her face like, no. really? You're going to yeah. come and you, you haven't been acting right and you're going to come and ask me for this? But God's not that way. God. You know the story of the prodigal son? When the young man came back home, mm -hmm. he realized he, he didn't lose it all. Mm -hmm. But you know what the father did? He gave him everything right back. Mm -hmm. well, he gave it all back to him. Yes. Because yes. <laughs> in his father, Mm -hmm. When he realized that he, he lost everything except his father. Mm -hmm. And when he came back and he realized that everything wasn't his father. And as long as you got the father, you got it all. Yes. And when he came back to the father, what? He got it all back. So it was never, he, he threw away what he had in his hands, but what he had, what was in the hands of the father was never lost it. Amen. And so the Bible says that, the, that we access God's grace by faith, Amen. you know. In Romans 5, verse 2, it says we have access to this grace by faith. And so the only thing that accesses the abundant grace of God is faith. Now, what is grace? Grace is God's favor, more than enough yes. generosity, abundant, overabundant favor of God, yes. given to the one who cannot deserve it. Yes. You know what, honey? I was reminded um, of something that happened a long time ago. I remember when our youngest daughter, Amanda, was she had a, a test to take in school. And she had already taken this test and hadn't passed it, you know. And, and so she was going to take it one more time. And it was very crucial, you know, for her to pass. And, 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 and I remember she was really stressed out about it. This really brought a lot of stress to her, you know. And uh, so I remember her calling me. And tell me, Mom, please pray for me because, you know, they were always, you know, when they were going to do things like that, they knew that prayer was important. Mom, you know, please pray for me because I'm taking this test. I need to pass it, you know. And the prayer, all the prayers before, we had prayed for every test before, and you know. Our prayers had been, Lord, you know, we pray in the name of Jesus, you know, help Amanda, you know. <laughs> That's how our prayer was, just asking and begging and, you know, God to help her. But I remember this time when she approached, you know, called me for that uh, prayer that the, the Holy Spirit led me to pray, in, to lead her to pray in, in a different, different way. way. And I said, you know what, Mija, this time, this is what you're going to pray. You're going to pray, Lord, I thank you because I passed that test. I thank you because, you know, um, the answers, the right answers are just going to flow through my mind, you know, and, and um, that's what I'm going to, I'm going to choose the right answer. So it was more of a prayer of receiving. Of receiving. Yes. You know, kind of like the scripture says, you know, thanking God for what he's done, you know, and just receiving. Uh, and that's what the prayer was. And let me tell you that, you know, when it came time for her to found, find out, you know, she passed the test and we're like, thank you, Jesus. You know, <laughs> but, but it, there was a change. There was a shift, no longer asking you had already asked. We'd already asked. Now it was a prayer of just receiving. Yeah, once you ask. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't ask to see if it's going to be approved of God. <laughs> we don't say, God, I want you to heal me. Do you want to heal me? No, that's not true. There was mean, a leper that said, you want that. to heal many, me? Many, many and people Jesus believe said, that. People say that. I want you know, to. But no, it's just that you have to, you have to receive it. You know, uh, Sometimes we're trying to receive from God, but we have the right motive, but we're trying to receive it in the wrong way mm -hmm. and so you start you know well if it's the will of god of course it's the will of god what parent wants his kid to be sick i've never wanted my children to be sick i've never said well you know what you know i've never punished them to try to help them know i've corrected their lives because they're going down the wrong path and jesus god compares himself to parents he says if you being evil know how to give good good things how much more him and so we need to learn to receive, and, and, and we receive how? Making a claim on what Jesus did for us. Amen. Because when you try to, it's like, it's like what? It's like this. What Jesus did is almost good enough. 
I just need to put my little contribution to receive. Let me do this or let me do that. And we think that like, like our little contribution is necessary. No, what Jesus did is more than enough. He said it is finished. There's nothing else to do. It is perfect. Mm -hmm. He's done a perfect work. Mm -hmm. And so we need to honor his redemption. We need to honor his sacrifice. We need to honor what he has done. We need to uh, uh, put our faith in what he has done and receive and say, thank you, Father, by faith. You know, just real quickly, you know, you're a witness of how the Lord led me to get people to, to experience this. And had people to ask God specifically Mm -hmm. in detail for something, uh, but based on what Jesus did for them. And they could never go buy it for themselves. They could never go get it for them. Just ask the Lord and he would do it. And uh, the the testimony has been been amazing. And the testimony, some of the things that people asked for were insignificant. Uh, But when they received them, they all testified how some of them even wept. Yes. Because they were like, wow. Yes, thank God. Because he gave it to them because they had to put it in detail. Yes. And the details was God's signature. Man, that was amazing. Amen. You know? Amen. And every time we've done that, the Lord has led us to do that. We've seen yes. the, the results. Yes. So we want you to receive today. Yes. Receive. Let's pray. Yes. Say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I thank you. I thank and you. And I receive by faith. And I receive by faith. All the blessings. All the blessings. That you have prepared for me. That you have prepared for already, me. Already. Already. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. I decree with my mouth. I decree with my mouth. That what Jesus did. That what Jesus did. His works. His works. Without my works. Without my works. Are good enough. Are good enough. I believe. I believe. I confess. I confess. And I receive now. And I receive now. The desires of my heart. The desires of my heart. I receive. I receive. All that I need. All that I need. I receive. I receive. What you have for me. What you have for me. In your timing. In your timing. Time that goes by. Time that goes by. Is not God saying no. Is not God saying no. God is a God of timing. God is a God of timing. So I continue to believe. So I continue to believe. In Jesus' name. name. Amen. 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 And And whatever that is. Yes. Spiritual, physical, whatever you need. Yes. He's got it for you. Amen. All you (laughs) have to do is just receive God's perfect and pleasing will for you. I hate it when it ends, you know. I don't like it when we got it. People have to go to work. Yeah, they do. Well, we pray that you have a blessed day. And once again, happy Cinco de Mayo. We invite you to join us tonight. We have something special for Cinco de Mayo at 7 o'clock. So make sure that you connect with us tonight. And have a blessed day. Enjoy this day. God loves you. And God has wonderful and great things for you. May God protect you.